Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Charles here and a question that I get asked all the time is how do I cook my sweet potato? So I'm gonna be showing you how I cook like freaking amazing sweet potato, how to find it, how to get ones that are gonna just always taste amazing. Yeah, let's get into the video. Ready? Yes. So here in New Zealand, we don't actually say sweet potato, we say Coomera. <laughs> and so where I live, is near what we call Coomera country. It's really, really easy to get them here. And I eat Coomera pretty much every single day. It's that good. So we pretty much always have Coomera at home. Um, my fridge is looking really bare. <laughs> so Morgan and I are gonna go get some because Riley's at school. Yeah, cook them up. Okay, top tip, if you're a mum, park right next to the trolleys. You can get a trolley straight away, and then you hop right in your car once you've packed up your car, okay? So for you mamas out there, that's for you. Ready, Moggy? Yes. Let's go. So what's your favorite type of Kuma? Um, that Kuma. Which one? That one. Is that your favorite? What yeah. type is that? Um, you tell me your okay? cat. That's a gold Kuma or I think it's called a Hannah Yam in the States. Boop, 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 boop. Now you're gonna have to listen really carefully because it gets a bit confusing with all the terms. So when I say Coomera, you substitute sweet potato. But something else that I found as I was researching this is that a lot of people in the States especially use the word yams and sweet potato. We've got We've got a very noisy neighborhood. There's always guys going past on motorbikes. It's really common to use sweet potato and yams. Oh my gosh. Please, I'm trying to film my YouTube video here. Do you mind? They use yams and sweet potatoes interchangeably, but yams are actually pretty different. And unless you're in Asia or you're in Africa where yams originate, you're probably not gonna pick up a yam. So when you hear someone saying this is a yam, it probably actually is a sweet potato. So this Beauregard Coomera or um, Beauregard sweet potato, this is the most common variety in the world at the moment. They are really, really versatile and I do like these, but they're definitely not my favorite. They're pretty mushy when you cook them as they have quite a high water content. Um, they're great to use in baking. So if you're wanting to use um, them in like a brownie or in muffins or anything like that, they are really, really, really awesome. And as you can see, they're pretty orange inside when you cut them open. So these red Kumara, the Japanese sweet potato, they're probably my favorite at the moment. They're very, very dense. From what I've read, they're about 40% higher in calories, um, which I'm not worried about and I'll show you why later on. Um, but that bloody motorbike is back. <laughs> ah! This is my entire life, is this. Imagine this trying to film, do a podcast. So they are purple on the outside and then white on the inside, as you can see. They have like a really, really delicious flavor. The thing about these is when you slow cook them, the sugars caramelize and they're just honestly so, so great. I love them a lot more than these. So these gold Coomera, which are Hannah yams or Hannah sweet potatoes is what they should be called in America. I really like these ones as well. Uh, the thing that I don't love about them is they're pretty rough on the outside. So I would peel these ones, whereas the Japanese sweet potato, you can see when they are a pretty new variety, they've not been sitting, or like they haven't been growing for a really, really long time, like at the end of the season. The skin is super smooth, so I would just cook that skin on, and the Beauregard would be the same. I would always cook that with the skin on. Whereas this one, it's looking a bit gnarly. But the flesh inside is this kind of pale, whitey, creamy color, but then it goes pretty orange when you cook it. So this is also really, really delicious. It's a lot more dense than the Beauregard Coomera. And then this variety, which we call Rose Coomera here. I think this was my favorite for quite a while, and then I got a little bit sick of them, 
but they've got this um, really similar look on the outside to the Beauregard and then when you open them they are white inside. So if you can get your hands on a variety that is similar to this I really recommend it. They have a very sweet, very dense kind of cake like consistency when they're cooked. Super delicious. When I looked up it was really hard to find what this would actually be in other countries and I think it's it's a hybrid here in New Zealand but the closest I could find was something called Satsuma Emo, I-M-O or Satsuma Sweet uh, but any kind of one that you can find like this that's got a white flesh is probably really similar. So when you're in the shops and you're actually wanting to buy Kumra, the thing to look out for is going to be a little bit different depending on the variety that you buy but the general rule of thumb is look for one that has the smoothest skin that you can find. So you can see this one here is like a little bit gnarly. I'd personally try to avoid that because I'm not going to peel it. For the Japanese sweet potato, these ones are all pretty good. You can see they look a little bit um, like peeled away on here but I'm not worried about that because when you feel the skin it's really smooth but sometimes I'll find some that are really veiny and they look like they've been growing for a long time. And I challenge you, just buy a few different types, cut them open and see how different they are. Because when they've gotten a bit veiny like this, there's a little one there, and the skin is a bit more crinkled, then they are stringy. And they've got these kind of like really stringy bits as you're eating them. So look for ones that are smooth. If you've got a variety like this, they're just automatically going to be rougher like I said but you can see here how the skin has just started to crinkle a little bit that means that it's a little bit old so you could still buy it it would be fine but I'd peel that myself because I don't want to be eating that old crinkly skin so what's the best way to cook Kumra? So Beauregard, I don't think it matters. They're great as chips. They're great cut into cubes. They're great baked whole. I tend to keep the skin on just because they go so mushy and then the skin gives them a little bit of uh, integrity once they're cooked. But basically all these other varieties of sweet potato Kumra that you can buy I really don't think that it's a good idea to cook these in tiny pieces because they're very dense they have got a lot less water so they dry out easily so what I tend to do is to bake them whole or I cut them in half to cut down on the cooking time or I cut them into really big chunks so you want to get these little end bits off here so that's my tray of Japanese sweet potato and I just put the baking paper in on top and this is my favorite way to cook them just like this so for the gold and for the rose because it's a bit old I'm gonna peel them and then I'm gonna cut them in half so I would hope that this goes without saying but apparently on the internet it doesn't if your Kumra is really dirty and if, or if it gets dirty while you're peeling it wash it give him a nice little bath if he's dirty so one of the questions that I've been asked before is why does sweet potato kumra go like this is it okay and you might have seen as i was chopping up this one it instantly started to go a little bit brown in these places that's absolutely fine that's just oxidization it's exactly the same thing that happens when you cut a banana so it, it gets exposed to the air and then it starts doing that doesn't matter just cook it up anyway you're sweet to go it's just going to show up a lot easier on um, one of these white fleshed varieties. So I've got my two trays now and I'll just be checking on these. So they're, they're quite different shapes and sizes. I've tried to get them around about the same shape, but I'll just check on them. Like if this one gets ready earlier, then I'll just shove it out. But these guys, the orange variety, the Beauregards, they cook a lot quicker. So if they're bigger pieces, that's all right. That'll be fine. I can't do this with one hand. Well, maybe I can. Just stab them a little bit. Ah! Especially if they're whole. Kids, don't try this at home, okay? Stab them a little bit. And this one, this is the gold, but I left the skin on so you can see what happens when I cook it. So I put it at about 200 degrees Celsius. Um, and then I just put the time on for about 45 minutes, but then I'll just check it and I use fan forced oven cook 
my babies. Such a good snack. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. What's your favourite type of kuma? Ooh. It changes. Look, look yeah. I do like blue guards, but I also like those red. Look red how kumas. Are they called Japanese soup potato? Yeah. Mmm. They're really good. Okay guys, so while that's cooking, let's talk about calories because I know a lot of people here are scared of eating things like kumara and potatoes because they're really, really high in calories. I'm going to challenge that idea because I truly don't think that sweet potato and potato is your issue. I mean, some people are scared of these anyway, but apparently Japanese sweet potato are about 40% higher in calories than these ones. So let's actually do some genuine figures. I'm going to weigh this out. A sweet potato like this, a regular Beauregard kumara is about 450 grams. So that's about half a pound. So if I go into my fitness pal and I want to add in some food. Okay, so this is saying that that's about 387 calories. All right, that's a super low calorie lunch. If you were to have something like this with um, like a head of broccoli or you're having a whole lot of vegetables with it, that is very incredibly filling and you'd be able to eat a meal there for around about 500, 600 calories, which when you think about the fact that most women will be in a calorie deficit eating between 1800 and 2000 calories a day, that's right on target to do that as one of three meals. And I'll link in the description where I'm getting those statistics from as an average. All right, so then if we add, let's go and do some more maths. So that was like 387 plus 40%, so that's 540. So even for a sweet potato like this, this Japanese one here, if I put it on, that's a similar amount there, even a little bit less. 540 calories for that amount of food, which is going to be incredibly filling, is actually pretty low, and you're gonna pair that with some vegetables as well. Perspective is really important when you're trying to lose weight because people will look at a exceptionally filling food like this and if you want to have a look at this, this was me when I used to work at a cafe. I'd literally bring one of these, bake it in the oven while I was doing my job and then have that as my lunch and I'll be absolutely stuffed from it. Everyone thought I was weird but I was like whatever. But a 500, 600 calorie lunch is, or any kind of meal is not a high calorie meal. What is high calorie? What does bump that up massively and stops you getting into a calorie deficit and stops you losing weight is your binges. It's that high calorie processed food. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got this um, bag of corn chips here. Pretty natural. And these are incredibly high in calories. So I'm gonna show you what I mean and how much you actually get to eat for the same amount of calories. Let's do this, scan it. So that's giving me 160 for 32 grams. What is that gonna be? Let's say we eat 100 grams. So about 500 calories, what does that look like? Okay, I'm gonna break out a Chef AJ trick here, but imagine that this is your stomach. These chips into here. You think about that in your stomach and that would actually crunch down to barely anything versus this. You've got to stop thinking about weight loss just in terms of calories and instead think, what do you get for those calories? How full am I going to be for what I eat? How is that going to affect my behavior later on? This is the thing that really, really matters, guys. It's not just how many calories is in this. It's whether this is going to stop you eating this later on. So these are actually, in my opinion, super low in calories for what you get and how full it's gonna make you. So don't be scared to eat them. I've eaten these the entire time that I lost weight, my whole 40 pound weight loss journey. Eat your darn sweet potato. So the time went off, but it's nowhere near done. If you have a look. Ooh, little poke. Done. Don't try this. Oh, they're doing well, but 
So I still want them to have a good So I put it on for another 25 minutes. Okay guys, it's the moment of truth. They're cooked. They're out. I may have done them a little bit long. It ended up being about an hour and a half all up. But this is the most important part. Do your sweet potatoes pass the squish test? This is the squish test. Can you squish them? Are they that cooked? Don't use a fork. How squishy are they? Because then, look at that. That's what you want. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is what the Japanese sweet potatoes look like inside. This whole tray was Japanese sweet potatoes. And then over on this one, this one was the gold. And the Beauregard has been really squishy. So that's bled a little bit there. I think this is the rose. Hard to tell now. This one was that gold one. The one that was white on the outside. Look at that! It goes like that once it's cooked. And how good? Hot, but real yum. That gold one. You saw this one. Kind of goes green inside. It's almost cake-like. Super yum. Very sweet very kind of doughy this white one though this gold one this is next level actually the Beauregard Kumra you're probably already familiar it goes orange inside like that this one is the interesting one this one is the rose Kumra Satsuma sweet and it looks like this inside so really similar to the Japanese sweet potato I do taste a little bit it does taste quite a bit different. I actually think this is probably rotten. It's been in my fridge for it. I've been in my cupboard for a long time. So not the best. But when they are, they're really good. Okay guys, that's it. I'm gonna go enjoy some Kumra now. And if you found this helpful, let me know in the comments section. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see from me. If you make sweet potato like this and you use a squish test, tag me on Instagram. Use the hashtag squish test because I want to see it is seriously the game changer. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Squish test. Mm. Oh yeah. Yum. Yum. Meanwhile, Morgan, what the heck are you doing? I'm just making a horse sleigh. A horse sleigh? <laughs> yeah. Sleigh. I think she said sleigh. <laughs>